Hello there, William Golding again with another chapter of Law of the Flies as we continue on with chapter 11. Before we do, I want to remind you what we're dealing with uh, after chapter 9 and Simon's death. We are exploring the falling action going toward the resolution. When you see authors get to that crisis slash climax moment, you will notice that the action begins to uh, accelerate uh, almost like in a free fall all the way to the resolution of the story. Now that's what we're dealing with here. Your essential question for the last chapter was obviously what uh, events happen that lead to the falling action. We're going to continue on with other events that happen that lead to the falling action of the story. And that's where we start with chapter 11, Castle Rock. In the short chill of the dawn, the four boys gathered round the black smudge where the fire had been while Ralph knelt in blue. Grey feathery ashes scurried hither and thither at his breath, but no spark shone among them. The twins watched anxiously and Piggy sat expressionless behind the luminous wall of his myopia. Ralph continued to blow till his ears were singing with his effort, but then the first breeze of the dawn took the job off his hands and blinded him with ashes. He squatted back, he swore, and rubbed water out of his eyes. No use. Eric looked down at him through a mask of dried blood. Piggy peered in the general direction of Ralph. Of course it's no use, Ralph. We got no fire. Ralph brought his face within a couple feet of Piggy's. Can you see me? A bit. Ralph allowed the swollen flap of his cheek to close his eye again. They got our fire. Ralph shrilled in his voice. They stole it. Well, that's them, said Piggy. They blinded me, see? That's Jack Meridu. You call an assembly, Ralph. We got to decide what to do. An assembly? For only us? Well, it's all we got. Sam, let me hold on to you. And they went toward the platform. Blow the conch, said Piggy. Blow it as loud as you can. And the forest re-echoed, and birds lifted, crying up the treetops, as if the first morning ages ago. Both ways the beach was deserted. Some litlands came from the shelters. Ralph sat down on the polished trunk, and there were three others that stood before him. He nodded, and Sam and Eric were sat down on the right. Ralph pushed the conch into Piggy's hands. He held the shining thing carefully and blinked at Ralph. Go on, then. I just take the conch to say this. I can't see no more, and I've got to get my glasses back. Awful things have been done on this island, and I voted you for chief. He's the only one who ever got anything done. And so now you speak, Ralph, and tell us what, or else. Piggy broke off, sniveling. Ralph took back the conch as he sat down. Just an ordinary fire. You think we could do that, wouldn't you? Just a smoke signal so we could be rescued? Are we savages or what? Only now there's no signal going up. Ships may be passing. Do you remember... How he went hunting, and the fire went out, and the ship passed by. And they all think that he's the best chief. Then there was... There was... And that's his fault, too. If it hadn't been for him, it would have never have happened. And now Piggy can't see. And then they came stealing. Ralph's voice went up. At night, in the darkness, and stole our fire. They stole it. We'd have given them fire if they'd asked, but they stole it, and the signal's out, and we can't ever be rescued. Don't you see what I mean? We'd have given them fire for themselves, but only they stole it. I... He paused lamely as the curtain flickered in his brain. Piggy held out his hands for the conch. Well, what you gonna do, Ralph? This is just talk without deciding. I want my glasses. I'm trying to think. Supposing we go looking like we used to. 
Washed and hair brushed. After all, we aren't savages, really. And being rescued isn't a game. He opened up the flap in his cheek and he looked at the twins. Well, he could smarten up a bit and then go. We ought to take spears, said Sam. Even Piggy. Because we may need them. You haven't got the conch. Piggy held up the shell. Well, you can take spears if you like. But I shan't. What's the good? I'll have to be led like a dog anyhow. Yes, laugh. Go on and laugh. There's them that will laugh on this island at anything. And what happened? What's grown-ups going to think? Young Simon was murdered. And there was the other kid that had the mark on his face. And who's seen him since we've come here, huh? Piggy, stop a minute. I got the conch. I'm going to that Jack Meridue and I'm going to tell him I am. You'll get hurt. Well, what could he do more to me than he has? I'll tell him what's what. You let me carry the conch, Ralph, and I'll show him the one thing that he hasn't got. He paused for a moment and then peered round at the dim figures. The shape of the old assembly, trodden in the grass, listened to him. I'm going to him with this conch in my hands. I'm going to hold it out. Look, I'm going to say, you're stronger than I am, and you haven't got asthma, and you can see, and I'm going to say, with both eyes. But I don't ask you for my glasses back, not as a favor. I don't ask you to be a sport, I'll say. Not because you're strong. Because what's right is right. Give me my glasses, I'm going to say. You got to. Piggy ended, flushed and trembling. He pushed the conch quickly into Ralph's hands as though he were in a hurry to be rid of it and wiped the tears from his eyes. And the green light was gentle about them and the conch lay at Ralph's feet, fragile and white. A single drop of water that had escaped Piggy's fingers now flashed on the delicate curve like a star. At last, Ralph sat up straight and drew his hair back. All right. I mean, you can try if you like, and we'll go with you. He'll be painted, said Sam timidly. You know how he'll be. He won't think much of us. If he gets waxy, then we've had it. Ralph scowled at Sam. Dimly, he remembered something that Simon had said to him once by the rocks. Don't be silly, he said, and he added quickly, well, let's go. He held out the conch to Piggy, who flushed, this time with pride. You must carry it. When we're ready, I'll carry it. Piggy sought in his mind for the words to convey his passionate willingness to carry the conch against all odds. Well, I don't mind. I'll be glad, Ralph, only I'll have to be led. Ralph put the conch back on the shining log. Well, we better eat and get ready. They made their way to the devastated fruit trees. Piggy was helped to his food and found some by touch. And while they ate, Ralph thought of the afternoon. We'll be like we were. We'll wash. Sam gulped down a mouthful and protested. But we bathe every day. Ralph looked at the filthy objects before him and sighed. We ought to comb our hair, only it's too long. Well, I got both socks left in my shelter, said Eric, so we could pull them over our heads like caps, sort of. Well, we could find some stuff, said Piggy, and tie your hair back. Like a girl? No, of course not. Then we must go as we are, said Ralph, and they won't be any better. Eric made a detaining gesture. But they'll be painted! You know how it is! The others nodded. They understood only too well the liberation into savagery that concealing paint brought. Well, but we won't be painted, said Ralph, because we aren't savages. Sam and Eric looked at each other. All the same, Ralph shouted, no paint! He tried to remember. Smoke! He said. We want smoke! And he turned on the twins fiercely. I said smoke! We got to have smoke! And there was silence, except for the multitudinous murmur of the bees. There was silence, except for the multitudinous murmur of the bees, as at last Piggy spoke kindly. Of course we have, because the smoke and the signal, and we can't be rescued if we don't have smoke. 
Well, I knew that, shouted Ralph, and he pulled his arm away from Piggy. Are you suggesting? I'm just saying what you always said, said Piggy hastily. I thought for a moment. Well, I hadn't, said Ralph loudly. I knew all the time. I hadn't forgotten. Piggy nodded propagatingly. Your chief, Ralph, you remember everything. I hadn't forgotten, of course not. The twins were examining Ralph curiously, as though they were seeing him for the first time. So I want you to notice the, the tremendous weight that Ralph has had on this island so far as the leader. And the conscious, as I mentioned in the book, is becoming more and more fragile. And that Piggy has a certain admiration for the conch because it's logical. It makes sense. Democracy makes sense, at least to Piggy. For Ralph, it sort of makes sense too, but he's kind of lapsed into this forgetting stage. Like, what's the point? Uh, they don't have ability to make fire any longer. Uh, there's no signal going up, so Ralph is questioning why he's continuing on being the leader. But Piggy's trying to encourage him to keep the dream of democracy alive even though that it is fading fast. They set off along the beach in formation. Ralph went first, limping a little, his spear carried over his shoulder. He saw things partially through the tremble of the heat haze over the flashing sands and his own long hair and injuries. Behind him came the twins, worried now for a while, but full of unquenchable vitality. They said little, but they trailed the butts of their wooden spears, for Piggy had found that by looking down and shielding his tired sight from the sun, he could just see them moving along the sand. He walked between the trailing butts, therefore, and the conch was held carefully between his two hands. The boys made a compact little group that moved over the beach, four plate-like shadows dancing and mingling beneath them. There was no sign left of the storm, and the beach was swept clean, like a blade that had been scoured. The sky and the mountain were an immense distance, shimmering in the heat, and the reef was lifted by mirage, floating in a kind of silver pool halfway up the sky. They passed the place where the tribe had danced. The charred sticks still lay on the rocks where the rain had quenched them, but the sand by the water was smooth again. They passed this in silence. No one doubted that the tribe would be found at the Castle Rock, and when they came sight of it, with one in accord, the densest tangle on the island, a mass of twisted stems, black and green and impenetrable, lay on their left, and tall grass swayed before them. And now Ralph went forward. Here was the crushed grass where they had lain when they had gone to prospect. There was the neck of the land, the ledge skirting up the rock, and up there were red pinnacles. Sam touched his arm. Smoke. There was a tiny smudge of smoke wavering into the air on the other side of the rock. Some fire, I don't think, Ralph turned. What are we hiding for? He stepped through the screen of grass on the little open space that led to the narrow let neck. You two follow behind. I'll go first and then Piggy a pace behind me and keep your spears ready. Piggy peered anxiously into the luminous veil that hung between him and the world. Is it safe? Ain't there a cliff? I can hear the sea. You keep right close to me. Ralph moved forward onto the neck. He kicked a stone and it bounded into the water. Then the sea sucked down, revealing a red, weedy square forty feet beneath Ralph's left arm. Am I safe? quavered Piggy. I feel awful. High above them from the pinnacles came a sudden shout and then an imitation war cry that was answered by a dozen voices from behind the rock. Give me the conch and stay still. Hey, who goes there? Stop being silly. You can see who I am. He put the conch to his lips and he began to glow. Savages appeared, painted out of recognition, edging toward the ledge of the net. They carried spears and disposed themselves to defend the entrance, and Ralph went on blowing and ignored Piggy's terrors. Roger was shouting, You mind out, see? At length, Ralph took the lips away and paused to get his breath back. His first words were a gasp, but audible. 
I'm calling an assembly! The savages guarded the nick, muttered among themselves, but made no motion. Ralph walked towards a couple of steps. Voice whispered urgently behind him. Don't leave me, Ralph! You kneel down, said Ralph sideways, and wait until I come back. He stood halfway along the neck and gazed at the savages intently. Freed by the paint, they had tied their hair back and were more comfortable than he was. Ralph made a resolution to tie his own back afterward. Indeed, he felt like telling them to wait and doing it there and then, but that was impossible. The savages sniggered a bit, and one gestured at Ralph with his spear. High above Roger took his hands off the lever and leaned out to see what was going on. The boys on the neck stood in the pool of their own shadow, diminished to shaggy heads. Piggy crouched, his back shapeless as a sack. I'm calling an assembly! Silence. Ralph took up a small stone and flung it between the twins, aiming to miss. They started and Sam just kept his footing, and some source of power began to pulse in Roger's body. Ralph spoke again loudly. I'm calling an assembly! He ran his eye over them. Where's Jack? The group of boys stirred and consulted. A painted face spoke with the voice of Robert. He's hunting, and he said we want to let you in. I've come to see about the fire, said Ralph, and about Piggy's spec. The group in front of them shifted, and laughter shivered outwards among them, light, excited laughter that was echoing on the tall rocks. A voice spoke from behind Ralph. What do you want? The twins made a bolt past Ralph and got between him and the entry. He turned quickly, and Jack, identifiable by personality and red hair, was advancing from the forest. A hunter crouched on either side. All three were masked in black and green, and behind them, on the grass, the headless and paunched body of a sow lay where they had dropped it. Piggy wailed. Ralph, don't leave me! And with ludicrous care, he embraced the rock, pressing himself to it above the sucking sea. The sniggering of the savages became a loud, derisive jeer. Jack shouted. To your end. This is my end, and my tribe. You have to leave me alone. The jeering died away. You took Piggy's you... specs. You've got to give them back. Got to? Who says? I say. That was a dirty trick. We would have given you fire if you asked for it. But you didn't. You came sneaking up like a thief. Say that again. Thief. Thief. Who's a thief? You are. Piggy screamed. Ralph, mind me. Jack made a rush and stabbed at Piggy's chest with his spear. Ralph sensed the position of the weapon from a glint and caught Jack's arm and put the thrust aside with his own butt. And then he brought the end round and caught Jack a stinger across the ear. And they were chest to chest, breathing fiercely, pushing and glaring. Who's a thief? You are! Jack wrenched free and swung at Ralph with his spear. And by common consent, they were using the spears as sabers now, no longer daring the lethal points. The blow struck Ralph's spear and slid down to fall agonizingly on his fingers. And then they were apart once more. The positions reversed. Jack toward the castle rock and Ralph on the outside toward the island. The boys were breathing very heavily. Come on then! Come on! And truculently they squared up at each other but kept just out of fighting distance. You come on and see what you get! You come on! Piggy, clutching the ground, was trying to attract Ralph's attention. Ralph moved, bent down, and kept a wary eye on Jack. Ralph! Remember what we came for? The fire! My spit! Ralph nodded. He relaxed his fighting muscles and stood easily and grounded the butt of his spear. Jack watched him inscrutably through his paint. Ralph glanced up at the pinnacles and then toward the group of savages. Listen! We've come to say this. First, you've got to give back Piggy's specs. If he hasn't got them, he can't see. You aren't playing the game. The tribe of painted savages giggled, and Ralph's mind faltered. He pushed his hair up and gazed at the green and black mass before him, trying to remember what Jack looked like. Piggy whispered, And the fire! Oh, yes, and then about the fire. I will say this again. And I've been saying it ever since we dropped in.
He held out his spear and pointed at the savages. Your only hope is keeping a signal fire going as long as there's light to see. And then maybe a ship will notice the smoke and come and rescue us and take us home. But without the smoke, we got to wait till some ship shows up by accident. We might wait years until we're old. Shivering, silvery, unreal laughter of the savages sprayed out and echoed away. A gust of rage shook Ralph. His voice cracked. Don't you understand, you painted fools? Sam and Eric, Piggy and me, we aren't enough. We tried to keep the fire going, but we couldn't. And then you came playing at hunting. He pointed past them where the trickle of smoke dispersed into the pearly air. Look at that! You call that a signal fire? That's a cooking fire. And now you'll eat, and then there'll be no smoke. Don't you understand? There may be a ship out there. He paused. Defeated by the silence and painted anonymity of the group guarding the entry, Jack opened a pink mouth and addressed Sam and Eric, who were between him and his tribe. You two get back! No one answered him. The twins, puzzled, looked at each other. While Piggy, reassured by this cessation of violence, stood up carefully, Jack glanced back at Ralph and then at the twins. Grab him! He charged. Jack, knowing that this was a crisis, charged too, and they met with a jolt and bounced apart. Jack swung with his fist at Ralph and caught him in the air. Ralph hit Jack in the stomach and made him grunt, and then they were facing each other again, panting and furious and unnerved by each other's ferocity. And they became aware of a noise that was in the background to this fight, the steady shrill of cheering as the tribe behind them. Piggy's voice penetrated to Ralph. Let me speak! And he was standing in the dust of the fight, and the tribe saw his intentions, and the shrill cheer changed to a steady booing. Piggy held up the conch, and the booing sagged a little, then came up again to strength. I got the conch! He shouted. I tell you, I got the conch! Surprisingly, there was silence now. The tribe was curious to hear what amusing thing he might have to say. Silence and pause. But in the silence, a curious air rose close by Ralph's head. He gave it half his attention. Then there it was again, a faint zup. Someone was throwing stones. Roger was dropping them, one hand still on the lever. And below him, Ralph was a shock of hair and Piggy was a bag of fat. <laughs> Again, the clamor, and again, zup! Ralph shouted against the noise. Which is better, law and rescue, or hunting and breaking things up? And now Jack yelling too, and Ralph could no longer make himself heard. Jack had backed right up against the tribe, and they were a solid mass of menace that bristled with spears. The intention of a charge was forming among them, and they were working up to it, and the net would be swept clear. Ralph stood facing them, a little to one side, his spear ready. By him stood Piggy, still holding on to the talisman, the fragile, shining beauty of a shell. The storm of sound beat at them, the incantation of hatred. High overhead, Roger, with a sense of delirious abandonment, leaned all his weight on the lever. Ralph heard the great rock before he saw it. He was aware of a jolt in the earth that came through the soles of his feet and the breaking sounds of stones at the top of the cliff. Then the monstrous red thing bounded across the neck and flung himself flat while the tribe shrieked. The rock struck Piggy a glancing blow from chin to knee. The conch exploded into a thousand white fragments and ceased to exist. Piggy, saying nothing, with no time for even a grunt, traveled through the air sideways from the rock turning over as he went. The rock bounded twice and was lost in the forest. 
piggy fell 40 feet and landed on his back across the square rock in the sea. His head opened and stuff came out and turned red. Piggy's arms and legs twitched a bit, like a pig's after it has been killed. And then the sea breathed again in a long, slow sigh, and the water boiled white and pink over the rock, and when it went sucking back again, the body of Piggy was gone. This time the silence was complete. Ralph's lips formed a word, but no sound came. Suddenly Jack bounded from the tribe, and he began to scream wildly, See? See? That's what you'll get! And I meant that! There isn't a tribe for you anymore! The conch is gone! He ran forward, stooping. I'm the chief! And viciously, with full intention, he hurled his spear at Ralph. The point tore the skin and the flesh over Ralph's ribs, and then sheared off and fell into the water. Ralph stumbled, feeling not pain but panic, and the tribe, screaming now like the chief, began to advance. Another spear, a bent one that would not fly straight, went past his face, and one fell from high where Roger was. The twins lay hidden behind the tribe, and anonymous devil's faces swarmed across the neck. Ralph turned and ran. A great noise of seagulls rose behind him. He obeyed an instinct that he did not know he possessed, and he swerved over the open space so that the spears went wide. He saw the headless body of the sow and jumped in time, and then he was crashing through the foliage and a small boughs and was hidden by the forest. The chief stopped by the pig and turned and held up his hands. Back! Back to the fort! And presently the tribe returned noisily to the neck where Roger joined them. The chief spoke it to him angrily. Why aren't you on watch? Roger looked at him gravely. Well, I just came down. The hangman's horror clung round him. The chief said no more to him, but looked down at Sam and Eric. You got to join the tribe. You let me go, and me. The chief snatched one of the few spears that were left and poked Sam in the ribs. What do you mean by it, eh? Said the chief fiercely. What do you mean by coming here with spears? What do you mean by not joining my tribe? And the prodding became rhythmic, and Sam yelled, Well, that's not the way! And Roger edged past the chief, only just avoiding pushing him with his shoulder. The yelling ceased, and Sam and Eric lay looking up in quiet terror. Roger advanced upon them as one wielding a nameless authority.